Okay, Mr. Zigner again here now with lesson 1-7. Today we're going to look at equations. You can notice the smiley faces next to three of the words. We have equation, solution, and defining the variable. We actually define those in our student-built glossaries, and I'll be collecting those the day of the test. So make sure you're studying these words for the vocabulary part of the Chapter 1 test. All right, here's one we're going to look at right away. P minus 14 equals 5. Now, they want us to solve some of these mentally. So we're just looking at it, trying to figure out what number minus 14 equals 5. You can see all the work is laid out for us. If you just mentally, 19 minus 14 equals 5. 19 minus 14 is, of course, 5. 19 is our solution. So that's a pretty easy one to start with. So it's our turn. P minus 6 equals 11. So what number up here? Take away 6 is 11. One way I like to look at these is turning my subtraction problems around into addition. Well, if we're going to subtract 6 from P, we can turn that around and use addition, 11 plus 6. So the answer plus that number we were subtracting should equal the number we're looking for. So 11 plus 6 is obviously 17, but just in case we messed up, just make sure to go back and check to see if that works out. So if we take that 17 back into the original equation, yep, it works. 17 minus 6 is indeed 11. All right, another one here. A store sells pumpkins for $2 per pound. Paul has $18. So we're supposed to use the equation 2x minus, I'm sorry, 2x equals 18 to find how large a pumpkin Paul can buy with 18 bucks. All righty. Well, 2x equals 18 is going to be that equation that's going to help us figure out how many pounds the pumpkin can weigh. We've got the work on the next slide. So here we go. We set up our 2x equals 18, and I think we can mentally solve that one also. 2 times 9, of course, is 18. Kind of like that subtraction problem earlier, this one you could use division to help you find the answer. At least that's, again, how I look at it. If 2x equals 18, that's multiplication, I can just turn that around and use division, the opposite of multiplication. 18 divided by 2, that's got to equal my value of x. And, of course, 18 divided by 2 is 9. So it looks like 9 pounds is the answer. And I think that was D. Yeah. I don't have a little circle for that this time, but there we go. D, nine pounds would be the the weight that he can buy with $18. Oh, our turn. Okay. A store sells notebooks for $3 each. Stephanie has $15. Use the equation 3x equals 15. So there's my equation to find out how many notebooks Stephanie can buy. So they're pretty much laying the whole thing out for us. You probably already know the answer, don't you? If 3 times something equals 15, well, you just now you need to know from your 3 times tables that 3 times, this one's again not too hard, 3 times 5 equals 15. So if these notebooks are $3 each, you can buy 5 of them if, if you have $15. So there's our answer, 5. Alrighty, so what do we have going on here? So an adult paid $18.50 for herself and two students. Okay, so that was the total cost to see a movie. If the two student tickets cost $11, what was the cost of an adult ticket? So you can see here in words, sort of just taking out the most important stuff for this problem, you've got the cost of one adult ticket, and you can see they're going to call that A for adult, I guess as we build this equation, and, and of course, simply means we're going to add on another amount. Now our two student tickets, oh, we're getting interrupted by the announcements. Okay, there we go. Two student tickets, they already said earlier was $11 right up here. And of course, the total amount of money spent was $18.50, that cost of the 
uh, rather the total price of the adult tickets and the two student tickets. So really we're just figuring out what number plus 11 is $18 and 50 cents. And here's the work for that. You can see they've already solved it for us. It would be $7 and 50 cents plus the 11 equals 1850. So that adult ticket must have cost $7 and 50 cents. Ah, our turn and good news for those who are keeping track of the length of my movies or videos. Looks like this is going to be another short one. Here's our last slide. Julie spends $9 and 50 cents at the ice cream parlor. Okay. She buys a hot fudge sundae for herself and ice cream cones for each of the three friends who are with her. Find the cost of Julie's sundae if the three ice cream cones together cost $6.30. Now I see something in here they're trying to fool us with. They talk about how she has three friends and she's buying three ice cream cones. So you might be tempted to triple whatever number they give us. But if you actually read the last sentence again, it says the three ice cream cones together cost $6.30. So actually, we don't have to triple it. They've already tripled it for us. Yeah, so that would have been a thing I might have fallen for if I hadn't read that carefully enough. So let's set this equation up. So she spent a total of $9.50. Okay, that's where we can start. She got a ice, uh, hot fudge sundae for herself. Uh, H. How about H for hot fudge sundae? Uh, that's part of the defining the variable. I like to pick a variable that actually matches the problem I'm working on, just to remind myself what that letter stood for. So H for hot fudge sundae. And then, in addition to that, we had the $6.30. So $6.30. So there it is. We're all set up ready to solve this. So what number plus six dollars and thirty cents would equal nine fifty? Well, I know I bet some of you are thinking, why not use subtraction to find this? And and I agree. I think I am going to use subtraction. However, some of you might also be thinking you can solve that mentally. You know what to add to six dollars and thirty cents to get nine dollars and fifty cents. But I'm going to just use subtraction to figure that out. So I'm going to bring that over here. Subtract away the six dollars and thirty cents. And let's see, what do we get? We have 0, 5 minus 3 is 2. Bring my decimal straight down. 9 minus 6 is 3. There it is. $3.20. That must be right there, what that hot fudge sundae cost. And it seems to be answer C. All right, we made it through another video. Looks like we're at about, oh, just shy of eight minutes. Go ahead and check out on my website the questions for this lesson, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.